Hey guys, Zombie Brian here with part two of the Redstone tutorial. Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about basic logic gates and clocks. Memory will not be included in this video because um, those aren't basic logic gates. But uh, we're going to start now. So this is an AND gate. Um, you have two inputs to it. The blue signifies the input. The red signifies the output. And they go to torches. The input turns off the torch. And only if both inputs are off or on, this is on. But only if both are on. So this is useful for stuff like rock, paper, scissors, overrides, doors, all that stuff. Um, and then you can make it into a NAND gate by punching this torch off and turning it on and making it only off when both are on. So that's easy. Or you could just invert these. Same thing. Both work. Not too hard to figure out. So we'll just slap this torch back there. And uh, here's a vertical design for it. We have input one up here. Input two down here. This torch powers this wire. This torch powers this block, which powers this wire. Holding this off. Only if both are off is it actually on. So, useful design, fairly compact, um, simple too. So that's that. Then we have an XOR gate, um, and it's only on when only one input is on. If both are on or both are off, it doesn't work. So it has to be an odd number like that. Um, it's fairly weird to make. I'll be putting the uh, website uh, with the designs for this up in the description so you guys can figure that out but it's fairly awkward shaped and I don't know what kind of use you could have for it but it's basically it um, that covers pretty much all the basic logic gates um, AND gate and NAND gate and XOR gate but this is actually part AND gate um, with this here so with AND gate and NAND gate you can make a lot of stuff and then same thing applies in real life with base circuits but I'm not going to go into that. Now we go into clocks. This is a 5 clock um, which means it's 5 delay. Right now it's stuck because uh, I logged out and logged in. That's the problem with these kind of 5 clocks though. With those it's a lot easier. But to reset it you just do that. And it's a 5 clock because it takes 5 ticks for, the, for, for a pulse. Because 4 here the repeater set to four and one here with the torch, so that's a five clock. And you can use this to shoot dispensers, open doors, to make them really annoying, etc., etc. Now this is a piston four and a half clock. Um, what it is is a sticky piston with a block in front of it, with a torch under the block. And when the torch powers the block, the power goes to the repeater and loops around, pushing the piston out. But when the piston pushes out, it realizes that it no longer has power because the block is no longer over the torch, and it retracts. Now, it's a four and a half clock because this is four, and it takes half a tick to extend and no ticks to retract. That's how pistons work. Half a tick out, no tick in. So, it's um, just a tiny bit uh, more different than this. But, yeah, to make a four o'clock on this you just set this to three set this to one you cannot make a one or two clock though because the torch will burn out with this you can make a two and a half clock but you cannot make a one clock because the block will push out and the piston cannot pull it back like that so you gotta do that and then so that's a two and a half that's the fastest you can get with this um, and that causes a lot of lag, by the way, if you were wondering. Now we have the super volatile mega clock. Um, very strange. Very strange. The cur the current is getting cut off by this, which causes it to pulse. And then it goes down through here, gets cut off by this, causing that to pulse. And then if I were to place a door here, it wouldn't be moving. But if you turn the sound on, it makes the noise. So, it's going so fast you can't even see it, but it's still moving. So, this is the uh, super volatile mega clock, and it's actually stable. Um, it's only volatile because you can't really see anything going on, but it's moving. It's pulsing faster than you can even see it. 
Um, it's just very, very strange, personally, but, eh. Alright, so, um, one more thing, uh, is a one clock, a stable one clock, that works with these. You can't make those with pistons anymore, kind of sad, but, eh. Now, a clocks work on infinite loops. Um, this is basically an infinite loop, because it just keeps going around and shutting itself off. Same with this. This pulse goes through, and it shuts this torch off, but then the torch realizes there's no pulse because it's off, so it just keeps going around. Same thing with this. These torches power the blocks above them, powering this redstone that I will put up here, causing it to flash. This is a one clock. Um, it will reset if you save and quit, though. So you'll have to just punch off a piece of redstone and put it back. But uh, that's not that hard. This is the fastest you can get a clock to go. Um, and clocks cause quite a lot of lag if you don't have a decent computer. So, well, they cause lag anyway. But the way you shut it off is just punch this off the top. And it's fairly simple. Um, you just saw me make it. So, um, it's basic. That's pretty much it. Uh, I will do a few more episodes on this tutorial, but uh, not this episode, or not uh, anytime soon. I've got uh, school coming up and a lot of stuff with friends, so expect that in maybe a week, sometime in the next week. S uh, sorry about that, that's just how things happen though. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.